We're going to have uh, an op amp, but now instead of just resistors, which we did before, we're going to have capacitors attached to it. So let's take this one. We're assuming, again, ideal op amp. Attach this to ground. Attach this to a resistor here. And put a source, we'll call it V source here. And let's say we have a capacitor now here. C, and I want to find out what V out is. Remember, the current going in equals the current out because there's no current going that way. That's a zero. This is a zero. So zero in, zero out, out of the op amp, ideal op amp. You have an infinite resistor right there. That's why it's zero. If this voltage is zero, what's that voltage? Zero. V plus equals V minus. There's no change there. We didn't change any of the rules yet. If I call this current IR, I call this current IC, the current going into that node, I sub R equals I sub C. And what is I sub R? It's this voltage minus that voltage. It's VS minus zero divided, I don't know why I call it R1, I'll just call it R. There is no R1, R2 here. Over R. Now, the current is I, C, D, V, D, T. I equals, in case you forgot through a capacitor, C, D, V, D, T. So here, the current's gonna be what? C, the derivative, D, D, T, of the derivative, I mean the voltage, what's the voltage? It's this voltage, because it's going that direction. This voltage minus that voltage. Play with the math. Take a minus sign outside. So you'll have Vs, if you divide by Rc here, because I'm dividing by C, equals minus dv out dt. Now from calculus, if you took calculus two, that's a differential equation. How do you get rid of that derivative? You multiply both sides of the equation by dt. What will happen? This will cancel that. So now we have what? I can take the minus sign. I have dv out in the front equals negative 1 over rc vs dt. And how do you solve it for v out? If you remember your calc, integrate. V out equals negative 1 over RC, the integral from negative infinity to T, Vs dt. Now, if you don't like to go from negative infinity, we can break it down to what? This will be a negative 1 over RC, the integral from T0 to T, Vs dt, plus the voltage at T0. Actually, it will be a minus, because you got to distribute the minus sign. will be a minus. And that's what V out. So what was the voltage across the capacitor? 
the V out, because remember, the V out sounds like, what was that? That's the voltage across the capacitor, because that's zero. That's why it's a minus. So it's really that V out is Vs here, or the voltage across the capacitor at T zero. Again, going back to that picture, what's V out? It's zero minus, zero minus V out is Vc. So negative V out is really Vc. So that's the equation actually for the voltage. So what do you notice about V out? What does this circuit do? This circuit takes the integrate. That's an integrator. It takes the integral of Vs and it puts it as V out. Now if I move the capacitor around, I can make that a differentiator, which will take the derivative instead of integrate. Watch what will happen if I just flip-flop the resistor and the capacitor. Just flip-flop them. If I make my circuit, I always put the minus on the top plus on the bottom, so I'll stay with that. Put the capacitor here. And put the resistor there. It is the same thing. This current should equal that current. Nothing's going to go in. It's zero going that direction. So I sub C equals I sub R. I equals C D D T of the voltage. What's the voltage cross the capacitor? Isn't that V S minus zero? Because that's a zero voltage here. What's I sub R? It's zero minus V out over R. Play with the math. RC DDT VS equals negative V out or V out equals what? Negative RC, the derivative. So now this circuit, the output is the derivative. We call that differentiator. Does our book cause even differentiator? Do they mention it? Yeah, I see in the bottom. So this is called the differentiator. The other one called the integrator. This is called the differentiator. It takes the derivative of the source. There's a little scaling here done, multiplied by negative RC, but that's just derivative and that's just multiplied by a number, where the other one, we call that an integrator, integrates this and multiply it by some constant in the front, still integrator. So if you want to create a, a, a circuit that will take the derivative of a function, this. By the way, if you can make RC equals to 1, playing with R and C such that this value is 1, all you're doing, you're taking the derivative and you're making the sign minus. So if you don't want the sign to be minus, what can you do? I want it to be a plus. I want it to be just a derivative. I can take this, feed it to another op amp with equal values. 1K, 1K. And this actually, V out bar, what this one does flips that signal. Remember, this is negative this over that times this. So that's V out bar equals negative V out. So if this value is negative and you want to make it positive, you bring another one and that will change it to a plus. Make R times C equals to one. And now you have this one, which is the derivative of that. So for example, if C equals uh, 10 microfarad, you say, okay, what can I do here? 10 microfarad. Well, I'll make the resistor 0.1 mega ohms. Mega and micros, they cancel each other out. What's 10 times 0.1? 1. One. So this becomes negative. So this here, with these numbers, they be becomes negative dVs dt. 
and this one is going to make it the opposite to that. We'll make it a plus dBs dt. Just by playing with the values. And I can do the same thing with the integrator. What will happen, just curiosity. What will happen instead of a capacitor if I put an inductor there? I have no idea. Let me look and see. I don't memorize these things. I don't have good memory. But we can derive them. You want the inductor on the here or on the top? You you choose. So one is going to be resistor, one is going to be inductor. You choose it. What's here? Resistor. resistor. What's here? Inductor. This is zero voltage. I sub R equals I sub L. What's I sub R? This voltage minus that voltage over R. What's I sub L? Hmm. V equals L D I D T for inductor. That means I equals what? 1 over L, the integral of V dt. So this will be 1 over L, the integral. What's the voltage? 0 minus V out. Multiply by L to clean it. L over R times Vs equals negative V out dt. How do you get rid of the integral? How about you take the derivative both sides? When you take the derivative of the integral, they cancel. Why? One is the inverse of the other. They better undo each other. So I can bring the minus sign here, minus L over R. The derivative of Vs dt equals what? V out. And what do you know? This is also a differentiator. That's a differentiator. Now let's take another problem. Never tell the camera to hold. The camera is running there. Oh yeah, forgot. Hurry up. Sorry, camera people. Okay. Yep, the web is going to be empty spots there. That's it. What about if you have a problem like this? I'm just laying the foundation now of 2 cosine 60. That's the voltage here. Notice it's not a DC. I have a resistor of 3 ohms here. I have an inductor of four Henry's. I got a capacitor up on the top of eight third and I got a resistor of five Henry. A five ohms I mean. 
5 ohms. Notice this circuit has what? Resistors, capacitors, inductors. That's called an RLC circuit. Sometimes you only have, when we actually, if you look at the next chapter, that's actually I'm laying the foundation for the next chapter because I want you to see what the obstacles facing us. RL, RC circuits, then the last topic, RLC circuit. I don't know if it's a separate chapter or part of this chapter, I can't remember. Just want to look and see quickly. Where'd you go? Come on. And that's called RLC. How do you solve a circuit that has resistors, inductors, capacitors in them? Before we take it there and try to kill you, because you'll see that it's really ugly, we, we start with an easier ones, RL and RC, but I want to show you what's facing us for a problem. You have a circuit like this that has resistors, capacitors, and inductors. Say, so, oh, that's easy. We'll just use KVL. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. So let's use KVL. Let's assign current going through that. There's two loops. This is I sub 1. This is I sub 2. I'm going to call this voltage V3. I'm going to call this value uh, VL. I'm going to call this value VC. And I'm going to call this V5, the value of the resistor. If I do KVL in loop one, I have negative two cosine six T plus V three plus VL is equal to zero. So V three plus VL equals what? Two cosine 60. If I do KVL in the second one here, I have negative VL plus VC plus V5 is equal to zero. I got a problem. How many unknowns do we have all together? Four. How many equations do we have? Two. I know what some of you are thinking. What about take the outside? Still not gonna help me. So the maximum you're gonna have three equations by how many unknowns? Four. Four or four. There's no way you can solve it. So maybe I can rewrite these voltages in terms of the current. What is V3? Ohm's law, that's what? Three times I sub one. Current's going that way. What's VL? V equals L D I D T. L is what? Four. V equals L D I D T. So I'll put it down. L is four. What's the current down? So D D T, the derivative of what? I one minus I sub two. V through a capacitor. It's 1 over C, the integral of I dt. So what is Vc then? 1 over 8. The integral, what is I? That's actually I sub 2 dt. Don't 
That's the current through it. And what's V5? Ohm's law, 5 times I sub 2. If I do this substitution, how many unknowns I'm going to have? 2. I1, I sub 2. But not two easy equations. Well, T, no. Well, it's just a function of time. So we'll just get the answer as a function. of. We're not looking for a number. I'm looking for an expression as a function of time. So V3 is 3I sub 1 plus VL, which is 4 DDT of I sub 1 minus I sub 2 equals 2 cosine 6T. The next equation, negative VL, negative 4 DDT, I sub 1 minus I sub 2, plus VC, where is VC? 1 over 8, the integral of I sub 2 DT, plus V5, which is 5 I sub 2, is equal to 0. We have two equations by two unknowns. And if I want to break it down, simplify it, that becomes 3i sub 1 plus 4 di1 dt minus 4 di2 dt equals 2 cosine 6t. This equation says what? Negative 4 di1 dt, I'm just multiplying through, plus 4 di2 dt plus 1 over 8, the integral of i sub 2 dt plus 5 i sub 2 is equal to 0. And how, I don't know how I'm going to solve this one. You get derivative integrals and everything. Normally what we do when you have a problem like this, normally in math, to get rid of the integral, we take the derivative of every single one of them. That's how we get rid of the integral. So the top equation, there's no integration, it stays alone. Second equation, what's the derivative of the derivative? Second derivative, very good. What's the derivative of the derivative? Second derivative. 1 over 8 i sub 2 plus 5 di2 dt equals 0. Now we don't have any more integration, just derivative. Okay, let me ask you a question. How many of you signed up for your classes next semester? You guys signed up, register yet for next semester? I'm still working with Topia. Did anyone sign up for differential equation? This is what differential equation is. D listen to the name, differential equation, equation that has a derivative in it. How do you solve an equation that has a derivative in it? That's what you have to cover. That's what you're going to be covering when people say, do I need to take differential equation? Absolutely. For engineers, we always deal with these problems. So we need to figure a way to solve these problems. You can't just look at them and say, use substitution. It doesn't work here. You're out of luck. And you can't always use a calculator. Nope, even if you put in the calculator there, it's going to say, try again. Well, normally what happens, we'll cover that in the course, when you have 
a cosine function like this, normally, what if, uh, let's say I'm looking for I sub 1. You say, well, my answer is going to be, if this is cosine 60, I sub 1 and I sub 2 will be the same thing. Some number in the front we'll call it K1, some constant. I have no idea what that number is. This does not change but it will have a phase shift in it. The phase shift could be nothing, could be one. And current two is gonna be some, another constant with the same thing, cosine 60, but the phase shift might be different. This will not change. This will be the same. Is that theta? Yeah, theta. I call them theta one, theta two. So that's what's gonna to happen to your answer. You'll go behind the math when you, when you take differential equation. They take all this math and they solve it. So if that's the case, if I think that's my answer, is going to be I just need to know what K1 theta 1 is and K2, I mean K2 and theta 2. Once I have them, I'm done. So how would I solve them? I go back to this equation and I go, well, I know my answer is going to look like this. So 3 times I sub 1. That'll be what? 3 times... K1 cosine 6t plus theta 1 plus 4 times the derivative of this. Now, hopefully you're good in calculus. What's the derivative of this? Negative sine. Negative This will be negative 6k, very good, 6k1 sine 6t plus theta 1. There's the minus. What's this one is going to be? Negative, I'll put on the next line. I just don't want to put it there. Negative 4 times, 4 times what? Derivative k2. This is negative 6k2. Uh, sign six t plus theta two equals two cosine six t. Oh, somebody erased my board. I'm going to need the identities here because i got to use cosine. There's an identity when you have addition like this. How do you break it down? Cosine alpha plus beta. That's what I have here. See cosine this plus that? It's cosine alpha, cosine beta minus sine of alpha, sine of beta. So I gotta break them in here and group all the cosine together, all the sine together and set the coefficient equal to each other. Then I gotta do the same thing, take the second derivative here and go through the math and set, all, put all the cosines together, all the sines together and set them equal to each other, the coefficient equal to each other. Then you'll have two equations by two unknowns with K1, K2 in them. So we're actually going to be doing problems like this? That's toward the end, yep. The book just stopped actually here with this problem. They don't want to scare you too much. They stopped here. So they don't give you the answer or nothing. Just said, yeah, we'll get to that later. <laughs> now, when we go to circuits two, instead of going through the problem like this with the math, there's a method called phaser. We change everything to phaser, which is complex frequency. And that allows me to solve the problem a lot quicker and easier. I don't have to deal with this math. There's a different way. Then toward the end of circuits to something called Laplace. The problem with phaser, phaser only works with when your sign is, co I mean, when your source is sine cosine only. If it's not sine cosine, you can't use phaser. So you're going to see us. I'm going to kill the video because I'm just talking about stuff that's not on it now. <laughs>